Last Sunday saw the first day of the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. Inside the conference hall, there was a welcome from the party chairman, a tribute to Baroness Thatcher and a discussion on foreign affairs. Outside, the News Channel's chief political correspondent, Norman Smith, had spotted something else going on. Big protest outside the hall uh, as well from campaigners unhappy at changes to the NHS, also uh, unhappy at uh, welfare reforms and other cutbacks in public services. Greater Manchester Police actually are estimating up to 50,000 protesters uh, lined the route alongside the conference centre. So big, big demonstration there just at the start of the uh, opening of the conference. Norman Smith also posted a series of tweets to the effect that conference security had stopped the BBC from filming the demonstration at the behest of the police, a claim denied by security company G4S and Greater Manchester Police. Footage of the march was used within BBC One's tea time and late evening bulletins in the top story, but only in this brief form. The police estimated 50,000 people took to the streets in a union-backed rally to protest against government spending cuts, particularly to the NHS. And as for their calls for higher taxes on the rich, well, David Cameron ruled out any mansion tax while he's Prime Minister. Over a 1,000 people objected to the BBC that its coverage of the event was insufficient, including hundreds of emails, calls and tweets to Newswatch, although there is evidence that some of these complaints were orchestrated as part of a campaign. The Shadow Health Secretary Andy Burnham, who spoke at the rally, accused the corporation of providing only cursory coverage. Well, we've asked two viewers who got in touch to give us their perspective. Will Parbury, who's in our Bristol studio, and Laura Marcus, who joins us from Stoke. Uh, Laura, first, can you explain what you felt about the coverage, please? Yes, Samira, I would have liked to have gone to the march, but instead I followed it on Twitter, and one of the first tweets I saw was from Norman Smith, who said that he'd been told that he wasn't allowed to record the march. So various people tweeted at it, well, why don't you get another news crew down there? Goodness knows there are enough of them in Manchester. But he just seemed to accept it when they said, you can't record here. He just seemed to say, oh, OK, then we won't do it then. And I can't understand who gave the order. I want to know who gave the order and why it was obeyed. This march was in a public place. There were 50,000 people marching against privatisation of the NHS, and it was barely covered at all. Will, what were your concerns? Well, my uh, main concern was this march was actually a massive political event. It was actually much larger uh, than the Conservative Party conference. Once you, once you strip out uh, the lobbyists there and the journalists, there are probably only, what, three, 4,000 Tory activists uh, in Manchester. This was an absolutely huge march. There were at least 50,000 people there, and it really wasn't given the scale uh, of reporting that it, that it really deserved. I mean, during the day... Um, there was a um, amphibious bus which crashed in the Thames and there were 30 wet tourists in London and that was the third item uh, on the BBC website uh, and and this march was classified as, as local news in Manchester and it really didn't uh, reflect the scale of the event because I mean this is the biggest march in Manchester, Manchester history. Well there's a couple of issues there one is about prominence kind of comparative coverage and the other is whether or not the BBC you know failed to actually do its job in trying to report something that was going on. Um, Norman Smith said on specifically Laura on the issue about security stopping them filming that that's just what happened that's all there was to it can you accept that? No absolutely not I used to be a reporter I was a cub reporter when I first started work. If I'd gone back to my news editor and said, oh, they told me I couldn't report it, he'd have sacked me on the spot. If you're told, no, you can't record it, number one, you don't take no for an answer. And number two, that is the story. That's a huge story. How many people know, watching this, that the BBC was told, we still don't know who by, you're not allowed to record and report this march. Who tells the BBC what it can and can't report? But according to its charter, it's supposed to be partial and balanced to not report on a huge news event that somebody tried to stop them from reporting is itself a news story. Well, the BBC, we did ask to come on and debate with you, and they've said no, so they've given us this statement. The BBC has covered the protests against government spending cuts and NHS changes that took place in Manchester, with coverage across all platforms on Sunday, including the BBC News Channel, Radio News, within the lead story on both the News at 6 and News at 10, and a full report on BBC News online. Um, Will, what do you say? 
Well, I think they're actually reacting uh, to the uh, kerfuffle on social media. I, they could see that people were unhappy, so they put, it, they put it on later. But if you see a comparative event like the London Marathon, which is actually smaller than this march, it's, it's actually covered uh, for, for hours and hours and hours, uh, whereas, whereas this was virtually ignored in, in reality, to, compa compared with the coverage of, of all the party conferences. And there are probably more people on this march than went to all of the party conferences. There were more people on this march than, than are members of the Liberal Democrats or UKIP in the entire country. Well, I suppose, you know, we don't know what the BBC's editorial decision was, but, um, you know, the numbers might have been a factor, the fact that it was peaceful, and the fact maybe that the law has already changed on um, these NHS reforms. Um, you know, the rally wasn't going to change anything, and, and perhaps those all feed into a sense of it got some coverage, but it wasn't as prominent as people who were on it might have liked. If this was a violent march, then there'd be absolutely tons of uh, cameras there. These were people who were actually doing the right thing, and they should have uh, got a fair share uh, of coverage, really. Laura? The changes to the NHS are still ongoing and the BBC's barely covered it. And Andy Burnham, the Shadow Health Secretary, former Health Secretary, has gone on record to say that they're going to reverse these changes. They're going to reverse the privatisation of the NHS. It's a huge story. Loads of people are absolutely furious and really, really worried and upset about what's going on in the NHS. It would have made fantastic TV coverage. It would have been really good and it was completely ignored. It's no good saying it's on all your platforms. For most people in this country, a platform is something you catch a train from. People get their news in the main from the BBC. They rely on it, they trust it and they look to it to tell them what's going on and it didn't tell them what happened on Sunday. This is a gross, gross error from the BBC. Laura Marcus and Will Parbury, thank you both very much. Cheers. No doubt you'll be giving us your thoughts on that, and please do send us your comments on any aspect of BBC News. Keep watching for details of how to get in touch with us.